Right, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I'll, yeah, my name is Tom and I like paleo channels. I'm sorry about that, but um, whereas, whereas active rivers seem to be the thing. But, um, <laughs> um, we're just going to look at, um, uh, at kind of past climate and environmental changes. I always think there's a, there's a kind of difference in, in scale. And, and just looking at one type of site on the east coast of of Lincolnshire, um, on the east coast of England, uh, at Lincolnshire, um, salt making sites, which are generally fairly small, but uh, and we're going to look at um, uh, work that we've carried out, sort of locating them, and find that um, <coughs> different things have happened to them as a result of um, uh, you know, the, the environmental changes. We'll try and retrieve this uh, this uh, stick, which is my pointing thing from behind here. Um, so we're looking um, at coastal salt making. I mean, it's a fairly obvious thing. Um, it takes place where the natural resources are present. That, that happens everywhere. But um, in this case, unlike um, you know, iron, iron working sites are on iron stone, coal, coal mines and coal measures, um, this, uh, the resources move over time and uh, due to environmental change and uh, some sites finish up being buried and some are, um, you can trace the surface finds and some we think are eroded away. Well, we're fairly sure they're eroded away. So we're just looking at, um, at what happens and thinking about what might happen in the future. <coughs> so the, the uh, resource that we need, or resources, is this supply um, of brine, uh, particularly in quiet water locations. Um, and clay to manufacture the equipment for heating the brine, which uh, um, I know it's a European thing. In Southern Europe, the coastal sultans uh, don't need to heat it. They have things called um, sunshine, something we don't get much in Lincolnshire. Um, so we have to have a fuel, um, in this case, chiefly peat, um, to heat the, uh, the brine to, to make the salt. Uh, and there is a fourth thing, which is, uh, I think, a specialist knowledge and I suppose most industries have specialists who are, who are good at it but it has a an interesting um, impact with the with salt making uh, we can ask ourselves were they were the, were the actual salt makers themselves I mean this is slightly to one side but they were they special you know in the, in the way that um, prehistoric iron workers were often regarded as special you know they, they made the sea into the magic mineral as we've called it there which um, preserved food and so therefore um, preserved life, sustained life, um, enabled people to live through, um, through famine and that. So it's used, uh, it's, it's, it's a special product really, it's used in um, um, rituals and ceremonies in all, all religions the world over and it was a, a, something that brought wealth, um, although it's not obvious that uh, salt made people wealthy in in Lincolnshire, so it's just kind of something to um, to think about that the um, salt makers m themselves may have been regarded as special. So uh, to, to look at, at, at where we we are, well, we currently in Glasgow. It's mentions this good map. It mentions both Glasgow and Lincoln, um, and the, the area that we're talking about is the, the Fenlands. That um, this little bite out of the the coast of eastern England called the Wash is the thing that we're looking at. And um, on this, uh, this old Landsat satellite image gives us um, a good idea of some of the, some of the issues that we'll be um, dealing with. You can see that in the sea, uh, there's a lot of sediment uh, swirling around. Um, some of that is, is actually the coast of Yorkshire being washed away and washed into Lincolnshire. But, but basically, North Lincolnshire also around there is an eroding coast and the, the Fenland region, which we'll talk a bit about, is an accreting coast. So a lot of that sediment is being brought into the wash, increasing that land and, of course, at the expense of land in Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire. Um, so the Fenland, Fenland area itself, there, there is the, the bite out of the eastern England. The, the blue is the, the wetland or the former wetland, and that, that's... Uh, uh, this is a soil, surface soil map, so you can see that, that particular colour blue uh, is peatlands uh, and then in between the darker blue is um, clay with um, uh, paleo channels and 
the, the light blue is the, the late and post-Roman uh, flooding. And these are what they look like. The peat is pretty flat. The, the, the silt land on the coast not quite so flat. And you can see this one is, is positively hilly in, um, in Lincolnshire terms. And that is a, that's a raised paleo channel um, on which quite a few of these salt making sites uh, were located, the ones that we could locate. Um, and you'll see that we're, we're kind of talking today about climate changes, um, environmental changes, but it's usually the word, it's usually the word change without an S on the end, where, but we can see um, looking at, at depth, um, changes have continued through time. It's very much a, a, a dynamic lands, landscape. So that, that grey is uh, a paleosol with the fresh water uh, flooding on top of it, then the um, marine and more fresh water, and you can see that there's several periods of fresh water there at Frisney. So that kind of sets the scene, uh, a, a mobile landscape, if you like. So uh, the salt making sites, uh, we've, we've done a lot of field walking around these areas. Uh, there's some down there, and you see two bits up there. Wrangell, uh, a place called Wrangell is not, is not that special. It just happened to, that we needed a coastal, uh, a coastal site to go and do a lot of field walking on, and, and that one had a nice name, Wrangell, and we chose that, and it was sort of smack in the middle of an area we didn't know. And then that area up there around um, Ingermells and Hogsthorpe we'll look at a bit later on. And we, we're thinking about how the, the environment has changed and how that's affected these sites and, and all the time trying to think about what might happen. Um, this is the, the LIDAR image of this region, the northern part of the Fenland region. And uh, you can see quite, a, uh, quite spectacular the changes there. So the, the white bits are former peat that's now round about sea level. Um, and the, the, the lighter blue, you can see the, the river with them, the paleo channel of the river with them, and then this post-Roman um, flooding is this higher bit here. And these yellow, yellow uh, areas here, they are all salt making sites, but they're, without, they're outside my region of, of study. They're all medieval, and uh, they use a different sort of technique to the, to the Roman and prehistoric uh, um, periods. So um, they leave big hills of, of um, waste mud. It's a different technique and a different talk really. We're talking um, prehistory and Roman period with all these all these dots around here. Uh, and the, the earliest ones are considerable way away from the, the current coastline. Um, so three maps again. We, we focus on the, the real inner end. This This sort of area here the earliest salt making sites are in that particular area um, around between um, Peterborough and, uh, and the Bourne area on the, the Western Fen Edge. And not all of those by any stretch of the imagination are um, visible or found by field walking. And uh, an, a number of them are buried and we only actually find them by chance. So we don't know how um, distant, uh, how we don't know how many there are. This, this one, you see a river right at the top, which is the River Welland. Um, this is a gravel quarry that was, um, uh, had about half a metre of uh, uh, river alluvium on top of it. And it was, uh, when it was removed, it got a, a Bronze Age site, including um, a pit full of um, Bronze Age bricotage, which is the, uh, probably the earliest, in, certainly in Lincolnshire, around about mid-2nd century BC. So we would never have, we didn't find that, we, we did field walk it. And um, the, something happened in the middle part of the Iron Age, and that big blank area, there was suddenly a lot of um, freshwater flooding in that area, and the whole <laughs> salt industry, of which we only know that bit about from the Middle Bronze Age to the, um, to the Late Bronze Age, Early Iron Age. Then they moved out into that area on the outside of the peat, and that's just one, si uh, one parish, Parish of Cubitt, and the the uh, triangles are salt making sites, just an idea of the density um, that there are, but they don't compare the density of those up there, which we'll explain in the remaining nine minutes or so. The, um, uh, this is the, the bricketage, the evidence from field walking. We, I, I spent um, seven winters um, field walking in the Fens as part of the Fenland project. 
And as far as we know, the um, ceramic containers in which the brine was heated are these sorts of things. They're all smashed up now. We don't find them complete. Um, we find a lot of that stuff, fragments of them, with, and supports and, and clips to hold them together. And so those are the evidence on the, uh, the clay with rodden, the clay with paleo channels um, area. And we find there's this about two or three hundred of those um, scattered around there. So it's a fairly substantial uh, industry, but, but now the industry there is very much arable farming, so they are ploughed uh, plowed to bits, really. Um, that's pretty much what you find. So um, the, the post-Roman silts, you can see there's a few dots from sites in the post-Roman silts. How can that be? That's because um, they were found at the side of drains, deep drains, and the bricketage had been picked up. But, uh, picked up by the, the drain uh, cleaners and that. So, um, site there, and then we're going to look at, um, at Hogsthorpe. Uh, that map, Ptolemy's map of Britain, um, surveyed before uh, 122 AD, and everybody's kind of had a go at interpreting it. Um, this is Alistair Strangs from, I think, 1997. Um, so this is the wash. And we have a place there called Selenae, the salt works. And uh, we're going to just sort of look at that particular area and see if that has, is any different to the rest of the salt work in the fens. Um, so the early 1500s of visitation, um, there was some Skegness, sometime a great haven town, um, a, a port having a, a walled town and a castle. So. Um, remains can now be seen at low tide. There's no real medieval or documentary evidence for a, you know, a walled town or a castle there. But there is documentary evidence of a place called Chesterlands or Castleland, which does sound like a Roman something or other, a Roman town, a, a Roman small town, it sounds like. So was this this place called Selena? Was the salt works actually the, the, the place? Um, this is the, some more LIDAR, which Peter Chan kindly um, put the dots on. So that's the area, Skegness, uh, that we was talking about is this sort of area, and this is Ingermells. Now, the difference between these dots and the ones that we saw earlier on is that these are all buried by um, later deposits. They're all buried by later deposits, found by chance, and a lady who um, walked along the side of the dikes and had a brother who worked for the Internal Drainage Board and uh, every time they came across one of these sites, this lady, Betty Kirkham, went out and recorded where they are. And several people have recorded um, salt making on the coast. Uh, note, there appears to be no sites up there. Wrangell is just down here off, off the map. Um, whether that's true or not, it's outside of Betty Kirkham's area where she worked and where her brother worked, so we don't know. But um, an idea of what the sites look like in that area, and they are different we think they're different to the Fenland ones. They're small, much smaller in area, uh, more densely located. Some of those dots there are several sites. Um, they're not surrounded by ditches like we know that the, the Fenland ones are. Um, no obvious settling tanks, which the Roman Fenland ones have. Uh, there's a lot more over-fired bricketage and green glazes. And there are one or two things that are um, these so-called orgets, which are like um, very small area, uh, very small um, pans that might be for drying and and uh, so so there are differences there are subtle differences and um the density just looking at that's just one field where there's some geophysics there's four of those buried sites nothing on the surface at all possibly a fifth there so there's a, a real density there almost as if it is an industry surrounding that area or that town supposed town called Selenae and when you look in slightly more detail you can see they're all in straight lines that's because they're all um, at the side of, um, of roads or ditches that have been cleaned out so there's a, there's a lot of straight lines Pi um, yeah the water pipes and things like that you find them but they're all buried um, similar to that one apart from the coastal one so um, so there is, a, there is a subtle difference, that's the Adelthorpe bypass under construction site there, the same uh, picture that we saw before, all buried. Um, we think the density is, you know, we can only tell what there is in, in those sorts of deep sections. Um, on the coast, uh, there are some eroded out like that, and one or two have been excavated as, as, so, as, as much as you can on the coast, but it's very, very difficult 
um, to do that. And then if you look behind you um, from that position on the coast, you can see the one on the coast, the buried ones, um, two kilometres or so inland. And if you look out to sea, if you turn around, look out to sea, you can see uh, what should be Selenae, Old Skegness, where they think it is, and, uh, uh, and, it's, and it's got the, the, the wind farm on it. So there's some very subtle differences within that one particular industry. And uh, I, I think it just highlights some of, the, some of the problems of trying to understand um, climate change and environmental change is perhaps a better word, changes um, with the archaeology in the past. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably leave it uh, more or less just there. So uh, the environmental change profoundly affects archaeological sites, of course it does. Um, uh, but not all sites are affected in the same way by environmental change, um, particularly in these dynamic landscapes. And um, we, we certainly there was no planning with putting those wind farms in. So, uh, you know, the, I don't know quite how we go about that in the future, but, but certainly we need to look at, at aspects like that. So the furthest inland are buried, then you find them on those paleo channels then more buried sites, and then eroded sites. So one industry, and there are subtle differences, obviously, between, uh, we think, the real industry around Selenae. We think that's much more intensive um, industry than elsewhere in the Fenland. But it's, it's um, very difficult. And the salt makers themselves, as I was saying early on, they may or may not be... Um, special people, but they certainly have to move because of environmental change. And one of the things I'm interested in, apart from this, is the cultural heritage of people. So um, also people having to move and they take their, um, you know, their, their folklore and their songs and everything else uh, with them and all things that we need to think about um, in environmental change. And I'll just put one advert for EcoSal up and that's almost exactly time, I think. Great.